St. Eustatius was a distinguished and very wealthy officer of the Roman army under the emperor Trajan. He was generous in charity to the poor, although he was pagan. One day, while hunting a deer, the animal suddenly stood still, and a luminous cross with an image of the crucified Savior appeared between its horn. A voice said to him, I am the Christ whom you honor without knowing it. The alms you give to the poor have reached me. When he went home his wife had received the similar revelation, and on the same night they were baptized. St. Andrew Kim Tago, Paul Chong Hasong and companions were Korean martyrs. Koreans came to know about Christianity in the 17th century through the lay community Koreans travelers who returned to Korea. They shared the faith with others and their numbers grew but was led by only the lay community until when a Chinese priest visiting Korea found 4,000 Christians at the age of 15. Tago witnessed the killing of his father for being a Christian, this inspired him to be a priest. The Korean Christians were overjoyed when Tago was ordained a priest. At age of 25 just a few years after being a priest the Korean government received news of this Korean priest in Paul Chong. The song a catechist aspiring to be a priest, they were arrested them and put to death together with 100 over other followers of Jesus. St. Matthews was a tax collector for the Romans and was despised by the Jews when Jesus asked him to follow him. Matthew was seated at his desk with the silver coins and his books doing the accounts on taxes collected as Jesus was passing by and as both Jesus and Matthew made eye contact, Jesus told him to follow to follow him and Matthew immediately let down everything he was doing and follow Jesus. Matthew is known to us principally as an evangelist. He was the first to put down in writing our Lord's teaching in the account of his life. Saint Ephigenia was the daughter of Ethiopian King Oedipus. She was consecrated to God by Saint Matthew the Apostle, who veiled her. She became leader of a group of some 200 virgins who also wished to consecrate themselves to the heavenly spouse. Saint Maurice was the leader in a legion of Christians in the Roman army during the 3rd century. Around the year 287, the Roman army marched out to suppress a revolt in what is now Switzerland, under the leadership of Emperor Maximian. When the Roman legions arrived on the battlefield, Maximian ordered all soldiers to offer sacrifice to the gods for the success of the enterprise. When they refused, Maximian threatened to kill the legion. Maurice responded saying, We are your soldiers but we are also servants of the true God. We owe you military service and obedience but we cannot renounce God who is our creator and master. We have arms in our hands but we do not resist because we would rather die innocent than live by any sin. Saint Linus Pope and Martyr was the Bishop of Rome. It is said he became a follower of Christ. After listening to St. Peter preach the Gospel, when he became the Bishop of the city of Besançon, the number of the faithful increased daily by the conversion of many idolaters. The saint once attempted to turn some of those away from the celebration of a festival in honor of their gods, telling them that these idols were but statues without breath or sentiment, and represented only human beings whose vices were public knowledge. He told them to turn to the Creator of the heavens and the earth to whom alone man owes the homage of sacrifice. After saying this a column of their temple crumbled and caused the fall of an idol and broke into pieces. This made the worshippers to drive the Linus out of the city of Besançon. Saint Padre Pio grew up in a family of farmers in southern Italy. At the age of 15, he joined the Capuchins. When he was ordained in 1910 he was drafted in the military during World War I, as it discovered that he had tuberculosis he was discharged and assigned to a friar. On September 20, 1918, as he was making his thanksgiving after Mass Padre Pio had a vision of Jesus. When the vision ended, he had a stigmata in his hands, feet, and side. After receiving the stigmata he 
never left the friary, but people used to come looking for him for intercession and confessionals. Many of them have said that Padre Pio knew details of their lives that they had never mentioned. In 1962 when Pope John Paul was still an archbishop wrote to Padre Pio and asked him to pray for a Polish woman with throat cancer and she was cured within two weeks. Saint Pacific of San Severino was very young when he became an orphan and when he was just 17, he entered the Order of Friars Minor and was ordained a priest eight years later. He was first assigned the, the surrounding villages where he enjoyed preaching the gospel to the poor and the uneducated. However within a few years he fell ill and was not cured for 30 years. Despite his illness, he was completely satisfied with God's designs in his regard. God wills it, he said in a cheerful way, and so may his will be done. In his later years he was often favored with ecstasies after the elevation at Holy Mass. His countenance shone with a radiance like that of the sun. The sick were miraculously cured by him, and he foretold many future events. Saint Fermin was consecrated as a bishop of Amiens by Saint Honoratus. He received the mission to preach the gospel in the remoter parts of the Western Europe and once in a city in France after long discussions with two ardent idolaters, he won them over. Desiring martyrdom, he decided to go to a center of paganism in the north, in what is now Normandy to preach and was arrested in imprisoned by the pagans but later released and continued his journey to wherever his soul needed him. The Romans heard about this and again he was arrested. When he reached Amiens he preached aloud and converted many till the pagan temples became literally deserted and was again imprisoned. But this time his desire to be martyred was fulfilled. Saint Nihilus had an attraction for monastic life but instead he was married but for only a few years where he later decided to live as a hermit and a propagator of the rule of Saint Basil. He was known for his ascetic life, his virtues, and theological learning. His reputation drew followers to Rossano, whom he began to instruct. When he heard rumors of making him bishop, he fled away and stayed away for 15 years. Toward the end of his life, he founded the famous abbey of Gratoferida and became its first abbot. We love it that you have spent your time listening to this video until the end. Would you like to share your experience of God's love? Come and join us at www.mustardseedscommunity.com forward slash join dash us. Till then may God's blessing always be with you.